Hello, everyone. Heather Holmes here with KTV Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me today is Peter Axelson. He is Director of Research and Development at Beneficial Designs, focusing on testing and also reviewing wheelchairs. And he's going to be talking with us today about protecting those with disabilities from the coronavirus. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for being here today. Awesome, Heather. Thank you for, for having me come on. Now, I know that you are in a wheelchair. So first, explain to the audience uh, your injury. Correct. Uh, I was hurt during a training accident at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. As a result, I have a spinal cord injury and basically redirected me out of the Air Force into an engineering career. So I returned, uh, went out to the Bay Area and got some degrees in mechanical engineering and product design at Stanford. So I design and test wheelchairs and we have a test lab with this big giant ramp you can see behind me that we drive power chairs down full speed to try to flip them over and make sure they're safe for Medicare recipients and for other veterans with disabilities. Yeah, obviously you have a really important role day to day, but even more important now, because as someone who is in a wheelchair, you had this moment when you realized I need to protect myself from the virus. Correct. I, I, uh, 20 years ago, I realized that I would think, you know, I need to figure out a way to clean my hands because I'd wash my hands in the bathroom and then I'd push back to the table and I realized my hands are touching these wheels and tires that are rolling around on the ground. And uh, so I have an illustration that kind of shows the problem with how the virus gets picked up with the with the wheels as, as we're rolling along. Um, and then it can get infected onto a cane or a rollator, whatever type of system technology somebody's using, that virus gets from your hands onto that device and then you also pick up the germs off the wheels on the, on the wheelchair as you're rolling. And so you've come up with sort of a, a solution. Tell me how you believe people can be better protected while they're in their wheelchairs. So basically, We'll go through the same procedure that's on the CDC website for washing your hands, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you. And then we actually I use a couple of washcloths and get those soaked up and then clean the, the wheels of the wheelchair, and I'm going to show how that, how that works it's in a simple way that makes it easy, and then go back and wash the hands again. Okay, why don't you go ahead and show us? Okay, great. I'm going to move over to my kitchen sink here. So the washing the, the hands part is, uh, you know, figuring out the, the 20 seconds, sing happy birthday a couple times, or, or you had a little lamb, whatever, to uh, get your hands all soaked up and, uh, and get the hands clean in the first place. So that's, that's step one, and that's, we all know how to do that. But the issue is then is the, is the wheelchair. So I keep a couple of washcloths at the sink, and I get those wet, and... Uh, Get those soaked up as well. And I get a second one. So I can do both wheels at the same time. When I've done this at an airport in the bathroom, I've used to uh, get a few paper towels in each hand. And I'm gonna get the soap on both of these. So now I've got two soapy washcloths and get the extra water out of those. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna use the soapy part of these washcloths and uh, don't need the wet ones right now. And I'm going to clean the, the chaps that I have on the side of my wheelchair here, which I touch. And then this, there's a buckle here and straps. And the chaps are to keep stuff off of my clothing. And then I also, I use my left wheel lock to lock my wheelchair into place. And so that's something I handle. So I'm going to clean that. And then if I had armrests, I would wipe those down. If I had a joystick, a powered wheelchair with the controls, I would clean that all off, clean my hand push handles if I had them. And then I'm gonna grab onto my, my hand rims here. I have these flex rims that connect the hand rims to the tire. So I'm basically scrubbing, I'm grabbing as I push forward, sliding my hand back, push, slide, push, slide. So I'm pushing myself forward using those. And then I try to go about 20 feet. 20 feet ensures that I have cleaned the hand rims three times. If I'm in a small space, I can just spin around in one circle and then I can spin the other direction to clean the other wheel. So it can be done in a small space. Now I'm gonna clean the tires. 
So I'm gonna put the washcloth on the tire and I'm gonna clean the tire as I make my way back to the, to the sink here because that's where everything's coming up off the ground from is on the, on the tires there. So then I'm just gonna re-rinse these washcloths out and uh, I'm gonna put those up to, to kind of dry out and then I'm gonna get some more soap and re-clean my hands because there might have been stuff that I picked up on those washcloths that ended up getting on my hands. So just to be safe, I'm gonna rewash my hands. And Peter, how often would you do this throughout the day? So I would do it whenever I return to the house. If I've been out for some reason, I would do it for sure then. I typically do it first thing in the morning as well. And then I would do it midday and then if I'm into my own home, I would just do it then at the end of the day as well. Um, if I'm out and about, and uh, like I said, when I used to be traveling, I would do it after I got off a of flight. Mm -hmm. I would go and use the bathroom and, and do this procedure just using wet paper towels at the airport. And uh, Or if I get to a restaurant, I would do it at a restaurant. So that's that procedure. And I have... Uh, one other piece of technology that I can show you um, that involves uh, actually an easier way if you've got the ability to set up the system to do it is I'm going to show you a wheelchair shower. And this is something that um, I created. I had my contractor cut a section of the concrete out of the floor here, and I made this, welded up this metal frame and put a floor drain in there and poured the concrete into there. And this has got uh, conveyor belt rollers in it. So I can just back into this area. And this makes it a lot easier because now I can turn my wheels without having to, uh, without having to uh, move around. So as you can see, I can really, this, you know, if I have a whole lot of dirt on the wheels, I can also get a, I can use a brush to scrub them off. If, if I have dirt in the in the tread, I can actually clean them out that way and that totally genius, clean Peter. them off really well. So this idea is something I'm hoping maybe like get like a, a shower manufacturer that does shower inserts because this is something that could just be made out of fiberglass and this could be uh, could be something that somebody could easily have installed mm -hmm. uh, like just like a like a like a regular shower to put that into the floor with a floor drain and be able to uh, be able to do that yeah so, yeah tell me you, you've approached some people that help those with disabilities and provided this information to them what has their reaction been to this well so we've been we created a little uh, document that's been circulated around and uh, this document has been sent all over the world and translated into a couple dozen different languages. And uh, so I just thought it, there's so much interest in the disability community around the world of people that are trying to get this information out to, to folks that use wheelchairs and other types of assistive technology. And so that's why we thought it was really helpful because we haven't seen anything really specific in the CDC about you know, they'll say you need to clean your wheelchair or whatever, but how do you do, how do you actually do that in a simple way that is not real complicated to make it happen in you as part of your everyday routine? It obviously takes me a lot longer to wash my hands and wheelchair than it does somebody else, but it's not something to, you know, cause you to be fearful or anything. It, I just really want to show people there is a simple way to do this and you can do it and not have to be scared or fearful about it and just be able to kind of get your chair cleaned up and continue on with your life. Yeah, yeah, that is that is the point here. We're, we're almost out of time, Peter, but you also have some other advice for, for those who are, are in a wheelchair in their home when it comes to letting other people in to, that, are, that are there to kind of help Correct. them. Correct. Um, lots of people with disabilities sometimes have 
personal care assistants or other people that come and assist that person in your house. So I'm letting this other outside person into my home. So before that person comes, I open the back door of the house and the front door of the house. So I get this sort of breeze of air movement happening through the house. And then I put on my, my face protection and I have that person wear their face protection and I keep long distance from them typically, but we're wearing face protection and keeping that fresh air moving through to dissipate any of the, the virus that, that might be there. You know, it's the concentration of the virus is what the doctors are telling us is when you get a certain dose of that concentration. So trying to keep it dispersed through the, through the house is a good thing to practice, I think. It's almost yeah. like being outside. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. And, and Peter, my last question for you, knowing that you've kind of come up with this solution uh, for those with disabilities, how does it make you feel knowing that you are going to be able to help people right now as we all deal with this outbreak? Well, I'm just, I'm just thankful that I, I did, to me, it, to me, it was something that wasn't obvious at first. And so I'm just thankful to say, hey, you know, I, I was in Washington, D.C. on, on the week of the first week of March and I was flying back and in this crowded airports, everybody trying to get out of Washington, D.C. And I was just thinking about this, you know, there's a lot of things to be careful about touching and how could, I think I need to share this, you know, with other people. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's probably something I should have shared a long time ago with, with people to try and reduce the, the, the colds and infections. I know for me, I've reduced the, the amount of colds and flus that I've gotten by by cleaning my hands before I eat and by doing the, the techniques in the bathrooms at the airport and stuff. So um, I'm just I'm just thankful to <laughs> to be alive still. So so that's thank you for asking. Now will we will we appreciate it and hopefully some of the viewers uh, watching this will find that information helpful as well. Peter Axelson, thank you again and thank you for your service. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank God you. bless you.